Good morning, this is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Charges are going to be filed today against several inmates following last month's disturbances at the South Dakota State Penitentiary. Back in late March, inmates were protesting over having their tablets taken away, and in the process, two correctional officers were attacked and beaten. And I think it's important from the state's perspective that folks need to be held accountable uh, for their actions. Uh, certainly, we can't have these type of disturbances, particularly if it threatens the well-being of our correction officers. Um, so I anticipate announcing very serious and significant charges for uh, the harm that was done to the guards, as well as uh, the property damage that has affected matters in the penitentiary. The two correctional officers who were hurt were taken to the hospital and were treated and released. Jackley says both are back to work. DNA evidence helped peer police arrest a rape suspect. 28-year-old Reese Clown is accused of raping a woman while she slept in February. Late last week, authorities received DNA results from the crime lab and made the arrest. Clown was in court yesterday and is being held on a $10,000 cash-only bond. In an update to a story we first told you about last week, a North Carolina man hit by an SUV in Deadwood has died from his injuries. Police say it happened at the intersection of Pioneer Way and Lee Street just before 6.30 p.m. on April 17th. 68-year-old William Whitley was jogging across Pioneer Way in the crosswalk when he was hit by the westbound SUV in the outside side lane. Whitley was flown to a Rapid City hospital with critical injuries. He died on April 18th. Witnesses and video say the driver of the SUV did not see Whitley due to a line of cars in the inside lane. Police say evidence at the scene showed the SUV was not speeding and the driver was not under the influence. Now let's get a check on our weather with meteorologist Scott Munt. Good morning, Scott. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning, everybody. Uh, temperatures today will be cooler than what we had yesterday. We'll go with a northwest wind today, 20 to 40 miles per hour. I think that will cover many locations in eastern Kettleland. Highs will reach the 50s and 60s as we'll have a mostly sunny to partly cloudy sky. Brian will have more details on your Kettleland Live Doppler forecast coming up. Thank you, Scott. The U.S. Forest Service will permanently ban prairie dog hunting on about 100,000 acres of land in the Buffalo Gap grasslands and badlands. The ban is to protect the endangered black-footed ferret. Prairie dog hunting has been temporarily banned since the late 1990s when the ferret was reintroduced to the area. Ferrets depend on prairie dogs for food. They even use prairie dog burrows as homes. Prairie dogs can still be hunted in a few hundred thousand acres nearby. You can learn more about the relationship between ferrets and prairie dogs in a Kelloland.com original by Ray Yost. Well, T may be the new home to a multi-purpose 85,000 square foot indoor sports complex. A proposal delivered to the city council last week calls for a facility including 16 basketball and volleyball courts, an elevated track and court space for pickleball, gymnastics and wrestling. City Administrator Justin Wayland says the report is the first step in this process and it'll be a few years before the proposed facility is completed. You can read more details about the facility and how it could benefit T in a Kelloland.com original by Gracie Terrell online now. A familiar fixture in the All Saints neighborhood of Central Sioux Falls will soon be closing its doors. Antiques on 18th will make way for a new development in the neighborhood. Its final day of business will be Mother's Day. That means a change in career paths for longtime employees who've enjoyed working there. I'm not ready to retire yet. Um, but, but I do know that this store has a lot of memories and um, create, created a lot of memories for the people that shopped here too. A longtime shopper says the staff has always been welcoming to customers. The store is currently offering 50% off all merchandise. And that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? All right, our weather update today. Widespread uh, northwest winds in the forecast, and that will keep temperatures 
fairly even from top to bottom. I expect a lot of lower 60s out there. Sioux Falls around 63 for a high temperature and Pier in central South Dakota also in the low 60s. Tonight we'll start losing that wind speed. I think that's good news and with clearing skies uh, temperatures in the 30s tomorrow morning. So a little patchy frost cannot be ruled out. You can see a 32 there in Aberdeen and not far from that mark in Brookings. Even Sioux Falls uh, on the outskirts of town could easily be close to freezing. And then tomorrow, a nice day. Not as much wind in Sioux Falls. I think those 60s will feel nice. We've got some 70s pushing into western Kettleland. And then we're going to warm it up even more on Thursday. We could see a large batch of 70 degree weather in western Kettleland. Even Sioux Falls trying to get to 70. But then we'll be watching to see how fast we'll start sparking some scattered showers and thunderstorms. And I think there will be an uptick in the the rainfall outlooks as we go into Thursday night and Friday. Friday is a very active weather day. We're seeing uh, numerous indicators now that we're going to get rain on Friday. Even the southeast could easily get into some severe weather again. That's all going to depend on this low track and how much destabilization we get. But I've even seen some new data here as of the 7 o'clock hour suggesting that once we kick this out to Friday afternoon, there could easily be 70s and low 80s in eastern Nebraska. So. It's that time of year, you know, we watched this uh, back and forth and I think last week taught us a little bit of a lesson too on Northwest Iowa catching some tornadoes and that's uh, certainly something we'll just keep an eye on for now. We've got plenty of time to get more details as we go along, but there it is on Friday afternoon. Warm front coming up to Sioux Falls, cold front there in central Nebraska, a lot of rain on the back side of it. And here's another thing to think about. Saturday, we tried to get a, a carve out a little bit of a break there, but then quickly on its heels, another system coming up from the southwest Saturday night and Sunday. And that, if it pushes far enough north, could be another soaking rain here. So we're going to have to keep a close eye on all these moving uh, pieces to the forecast, if you will. Uh, the numbers on the precipitation forecast, the Euro model, couple of different interpretations, but the AI versions, at least an inch or two in the southeast. The ensemble, which is a weighted average, is even more than that. So I do think it's safe to say it's going to be a wetter period in the forecast. As we sum things up, let's look at the seven day. We've got numerous chances of rain starting Thursday night into Friday and then Saturday morning could be a deal where we're in the leftovers and then that next round comes up on Sunday and it could turn colder than we're currently forecasting. I think 50s are now looking very likely on Sunday possibly holding in the 40s if the system gets wrapped up enough on Sunday. And notice we've bumped up some of the odds of rain there in northeast South Dakota. So more to come on that story. Pierre, you bet we're going to start picking up some rain chances Thursday night into Friday. And then that track of that southern system will still possibly affect us here for the weekend. So make sure you're plugged in on the forecast if you have outdoor plans. More details at Kettleland.com.